What's up, everybody? Um, I'm back today to give you guys a review on the Ground Control Feather Light 4 frames. Uh, I've been using these for a few months now and wanted to give my thoughts, um, partially because I noticed like there weren't many reviews of the Feather Light 4s on YouTube. Like there are some, uh, nothing that really goes too much in depth. I feel like these are overlooked as frames and kind of underrated. Um, so let's get into it. So I've been experimenting with flat for several months now. I went through a few different frames like the Fluid 5s, Create Originals, uh, Them Street frames, and they all worked to like varying degrees of success, but I never had like the full like confidence um, of grinding with anti-rocker. And there are always a couple tricks that I lost with each of those frames, like mostly like torque style tricks. Um, and so it was always in the back of my mind that like, I wish I could find like a good traditional flat frame uh, that I could just use full time and not have to like alternate with an anti-rocker frame and then go back to a flat frame. I just wanted like one frame for all situations. Um, and for a while, it didn't seem like that was possible. I just thought like, I'm just not good enough of a skater. Like my technique is not precise enough to, to utilize the frame, flat frames that are on the market right now. Um, so I kind of almost gave up, but then I decided to give the Feather Light 4s a shot. Um, they're not, again, like I said, there's not a, a lot of reviews on them, and they're certainly not like the most hype frames on the market right now. But just from pictures alone, like you could see, like it has some pretty good wheel bike protection, um, and they're fairly affordable. They're like 70 or 80 bucks. Uh, so I decided to pull the trigger and gave it a go. Um, these in particular are the medium sized ones, the 257 wheelbase. So my first impression of these frames actually when I got them and had them in my hand was kind of lukewarm. Like I wasn't particularly blown away or anything like that. Um, it just kind of seems like almost like a half baked idea. You know, they just took a Featherlight 3 and slapped the H block from their HD frames. Didn't seem like much like R&D really went into this, um, but I stand corrected. When I actually started using these frames, like the first session, I was really, really impressed with, with how they grinded and how they functioned. It looks like it might be a fairly tall H block, but it's actually really not quite as extreme of a boot down angle because you could see from the sides, these these H blocks are have a really significant taper on the edges. So when you're actually locking on, you're not locking on from the bottom of this H block. You're locking on from the side and and resting on your backslide plate. So it's actually not quite as extreme of a boot down angle as it might seem, but it's still lower than any other anti rocker frame I've had. It it still does definitely have a lower angle, and for me that's a uh, another pro like I like getting low on royales and backslides I like to be able to really uh, bone over on those grinds because if you have a setup where you're kind of more stood up if you go any lower you slip out so I like the fact that these require a steeper angle but not like to an extreme point or anything like that uh, the wheel bite protection is is really good I mean it you can see the H block comes up a little bit and provides like a little bit of that uh, like cupping over your middle two wheels but it's not like extreme it's a very like you know it's a very like uh, conservative amount of uh, wheel bite protection but it really works well uh, the shape of the H block locks in really well for rails um, I've heard some people say that they're not a fan of how it locks for ledges um, but for me with the SL the Razor's SL boot yeah I no problems, like ledges grind really well. Um, I, I haven't really noticed that issue. Um, the H block uh, is not like crazy wide. Uh, the split between the middle two wheels, I think I is about 111 millimeters, if I recall correctly. Um, just as a comparison, the Fluid 5s I think are like 118 
and the Dari Dari Entente frames are 125. So relative to other flat frames, this is actually a very like close spacing between the two middle wheels. Um, and I guess if I could have my way, I would maybe um, split them a little bit wider. But the way it is, I don't have any issues. I don't think that the H block is too small. Um, it works really great for me. So. Having said all that though, um, you know, wheel bike is still possible. You know, there's no frame that just magically, you know, gets rid of all wheel bike protection. There's no frame that's going to turn you into an amazing uh, flat skater overnight. You know, this all requires you to put in the work. Uh, you still need to lock in precisely um, and very deliberately um, and, and get lower. Um, but again, if as long as you're doing that, I, I can honestly say that wheel bite has not been on my mind. And with the feather, feather Light 4s, I gained back all of my tricks that I lost on my other flat frames. I could do back torques on angle iron. I could do front fars on angle iron. Um, and those were tricks that are, I was very scared to do on like the fluid fives. And as far as the feel of the grinding, you know, these, these H blocks feel pretty fast. In fact, I might be wrong, but I suspect that this H block is a, is a harder plastic than the rest of the frame. Um, the, you know, I thought the H block would actually wear in quite quickly because they don't really look that thick, but they've been maintaining very well for the last three months on all sorts of obstacles and they kind of they kind of groove in um, but overall they still retain their shape pretty well. Um, a few other miscellaneous things I like about the frames is the fact that the H block is removable. Um, they're like $15 for a, a, a fresh pair. So this uh, the frames can last you quite a long time um, also, they are very light. The plastic is pretty light. So, you know, if the overall weight of your skates is a concern, um, they are pretty light. Uh, and of course, ground control always uses those single-sided axle heads, which is always convenient. And so now moving on to the things I didn't like about the frames, um, not a whole lot. I mean, like I mentioned, these plastic, uh, these frames are, are very light plastic. So it's great because it, you know, it gives you a light frame, but on the downside, they feel a little bit flimsy. Um, I know that when you take out the wheels, like you could just, with your two fingers, you could just squeeze these frames in and out. So they're not the sturdiest frames. They even at times might feel a little bit sloppy, um, which means power transfer will not be the best on these frames. Um, again, for me, I don't skate that fast. I don't skate like, I don't zip across parks and, you know, skate mini ramp all the time. I'm pretty like, you know, conservative with the speed. So I don't really need anything that has um, like the highest level of power transfer and responsiveness. Um, but at the same time, I do notice at times like compared to like the fluid four, fluid fives, which are like really like thick, dense plastic, um, yeah, you definitely notice a little bit of loss in that in that power transfer. And, you know, if you ask me, it's a very easy solution to that. You know, all they really would have to do is just add a plastic bridge across the two wheels right here. Like you, you see that on the Them Street frames. Uh, it's on the Rossi's frame, a um, couple other frames that have that. But if you add that bridge, there's no there's no warping or bending of the frames. Like it's such an easy fix. It, it won't interfere with the UFS bolts. It, it wouldn't affect anything. It's such an easy fix. Um, so yeah, I really wish they would do that. But again, as the frame is right now, it's not a deal breaker. You know, the, the power transfer and the speed is sufficient for me and my skating, maybe not sufficient for you. Um, you know, like I said, from the beginning, the main factor for me is wheel bite. And in that regard, these frames are fantastic. So overall with these, uh, with these frames, I haven't had to swap back to my anti-rocker frames since I got these, which is saying a lot for me. Um, I have like all the confidence back 
Um, it just feels very close to skating anti-rocker when it comes to the grinding. But as far as a traditional flat frame, I think these rank really high up there. I think, again, they're kind of overlooked. Um, I would highly recommend them to anybody that's trying to get into flat um, or maybe not fully comfortable with um, some of the other flat frames out there. Somebody who's looking for a little bit more wheel bite protection, um, but doesn't want to quite graduate to like wish frames or Aeons. You just want a traditional UFS flat frame. I would say these are definitely worth, uh, worth trying out. Okay, well that basically ends this review. Appreciate you joining and take you out with some skating. Have a good one.